Hello and welcome to the European Parliament. My name is Catherine Fior and I'm delighted to welcome two MEPs from uh, who couldn't be more geographically uh, distant, distant, <laughs> uh, but uh, but also from different political parties. So, but united by values, <laughs> very much. <laughs> so, Agree. Petras Ostravicius exactly. from the Alde Group and Anna Gomez from S and D Group. So, Jean Claude Juncker presented the five scenarios, five possible scenarios for the future of Europe. Which option would you like to see? Well, I'm standing for more Europe, more united Europe and uh, a better action on, on the European side. Uh, I would uh, probably <clears throat> sum up all those five into two. No Europe and more Europe. So, I mean, for, for me, I mean, these two ones uh, would be enough to, to choose. Uh, among those five, uh, well, you might see something uh, a bit uh, more, something a bit less. Uh, well, as for discussion, maybe it's good, but uh, I would really consider only two. Are we together? Are we doing something more? Are we continuing uh, the policies already proved to be efficient and inventing something more by reacting I mean, to the changing environment? I mean, our own um, situation? Or we, let's say, um, somehow badly promoted uh, by the general mood uh, of Brexit, uh, falling apart. Uh, so for me, two would be enough. And Anna, Gianni Pitella, he sounded a little bit dis disappointed by this paper. Yeah, but I, I, I am disappointed too, because I wish the Commission would actually assume its responsibilities and actually do not just lay the five scenarios for us, <laughs> but actually say, this is mine and the Council should be confronted with that, the member states. And obviously the only scenario that is truly European is actually the fifth scenario. It's doing more together. Yes. I mean, we are faced with transnational challenges and threats. It's things that no country, uh, the more, uh, the, richer, it, uh, the richer it is, it can't uh, face together. Uh, it can't face alone. We yeah. need to work together, be it for climate change, be it for the security challenges we face. I mean, several Indeed. people, as we are saying, are in denial, but we have a war inside Europe, which is the, the one resulting from the aggression of, of, uh, of Russia in Ukraine. We have uh, tremendous conflicts all along our neighborhood, which uh, are there because there was lack of Europe, because actually exactly. in the recent years, the member states, in a very egoistic exactly. and nationalistic way, retracted from their commitments under the Lisbon Treaty, where they were supposed to go forward in working European. And that's why we are confronted, as Peter said, with a really existential uh, question. To be or not to be. To be or not to be. And exactly. not to be, uh, <laughs> citizens must know. That's right. It's about misery. It's about war. Yep. Because no Europe is misery and war. We have had centuries of, of, of history to tell us that. Yep. And uh, our citizens should not take Europe for granted and should indeed demand that our member states, the governments, but as well the Commission, take their responsibilities seriously and move forward. Do you, do you think Lithuanians see this? When you speak to people, when you're back home in Lithuania, do they understand the need for more Europe? I'm sure. Uh, well, well, generally speaking, Lithuanians are standing firmly for European project. We are among probably most uh, favorably uh, support, uh, supportive for the European project. And not necessarily that we are just 13 or 14 years in the EU and we are not uh, really tired from uh, so-called negative EU uh, integration experience. I don't believe. Uh, well, you know, I mean, as a smaller country being exposed to the external border of the European Union, we see such a difference uh, as to be in or to be out. So we can't compare, I mean, the situation we've been before membership and after. It's like a day and night. I mean, I, I, I do not really uh, exaggerate um, um, speaking about this. And uh, well, and my belief is still that we are in a kind of in the beginning of the process. I mean, to feel really all the favorite um, uh, parts, uh, well, sides of uh, of the membership. So that's why I think we are not, uh, you know, just blinded by the. Um, 
beauty of uh, European integration, we see a real value and we see a change which comes to the country to be more stable, to be in a kind of cooperation uh, based on solidarity. We changed many things, I can tell you. I mean, I, one thing, I mean, energy security or energy union. I mean, we've been so exposed, I mean, for decades and decades uh, monopoly dictate from uh, Gazprom and from Russian uh, supplies and so on. Now things have changed. Why have things have changed? Because we implemented so many projects supported by the European Union. We have contributed to the general policy of the uh, energy policy of the European Union. And this is one, only one example which changed our situation completely. So. But don't we don't need more arguments <laughs> <laughs> on the practical side somewhere like portugal that has suffered a great deal during this economic crisis and it's it's taken the toll on all of europe is europe still seen as a force for good within portugal yes absolutely and all the portuguese still consider that indeed their future is within europe because europe is our anchor to democracy to the rule of law and even if we disagree with these austerity programs which we believe were disastrous and actually we see them all over europe actually delivering lots of people to the hands of the populists and the xenophobes like marine le pen and so on because that's the origin of why these people are, uh, are doing so well because people are afraid of losing their jobs we're not having policy is that indeed sustain job creation in Europe and growth. But, I mean, in Portugal now, since we have got rid of these policies, we are doing much better now. But the, the question is, indeed, for the challenges we face, collective challenges we face, namely in the basic field of security and defense, yep. namely to fight terrorism. We need more investment, and that can only be rational if it is done European, if it's done not in duplication. And for that, of course, we need resources uh, at the European level, with a proper budget at the EU level, but as well at the national level. Where are we going to, to get those resources? I mean, it's just enough that our member states would be indeed, and the Commission would indeed be uh, uh, consequent and, and delivering on, for instance, fighting tax fraud, tax evasion, uh, illicit flows that go through the, the tax havens onshore and offshore. We know that we have them inside the EU. Cease this race in, uh, to the bottom that we see in taxation within member states. That actually is totally undermining the single market because you can't have fair competition if Holland, uh, the Netherlands, <laughs> is, uh, is trying to outsmart Portugal in taxation to make all the companies go to the, the pay, no yeah. pay, pay less taxes in, yeah, Ireland, yes. in the Netherlands or in, in Ireland. We, then we would have resources at the European level and at the national level to face the kind of challenges we face and that we can only do it European and the Portuguese know that very well and you have a, a government which is clearly with going away from these austerity policies because they are so stupid but is strongly pro-European strongly committed to European principles and values and actually the criticism that is making to these policies is exactly on this on the basis of this uh, exactly same European values. There seems to be quite a big chasm between those who want Europe to go forward just as together all countries or some sort of coalition of the willing where you know some states may be more hesitant um, and some may be more favorable towards further EU integration. What would you say to this approach? Would you like to see a differentiated approach or do we just have to accept it as real politic? Well, I myself, I am in favor of having uh, probably different speed uh, Europe. I mean, it's, it's a reality for the time of being, but we should not build any artificial uh, borders and not uh, impose a kind of principles not to let those countries which want to catch up to join certain circles. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't agree with Mr. Juncker who said that if it's multi-speed multi Europe, uh, it's a complicated um, scenario with uh, different circles, uh, speeds and, and principles. No, I think we should uh, respect reality. For some countries, probably for historical and political reasons, it's not yet a real time I mean, to join uh, inner circles, Euro, Schengen, whatever I mean we're speaking about I mean defense union it is another uh, probably challenge but we should be patient enough I mean to prove that once you join you really you built a value 
and I mean you receive something out of this. So I would be really in favor of uh, this kind of a scenario, but of course with the open, let's say, approach, open-minded approach to those who want to join. And uh, where I would agree. you accept I agree with, this? With, with Peter, but I don't think that this should lead us so far as to accept differentiation as the norm. I mean, this no. was the British uh, role inside the European Union as a, a Troy, uh, Trojan horse to actually prevent us from moving forward. Even in areas where Britain could actually punch above its weight by working European, take security and defense, it's one of them. Uh, but uh, differentiation, if differentiation means lack of solidarity, no. no. For instance, now in the asylum policy, I can't accept that the Commission accepts that a country like uh, Hungary and other countries simply decline to, uh, to, to, to respond with a solidarity that is necessary, for instance, for the relocation mechanisms and find all sorts of outrageous and un-European excuses not to receive refugees and even to repress refugees to put them in jails and so on and so on. That is simply not acceptable and in my, question, in my opinion it's not just a matter of finding them, it's actually there should be real sanctions, namely in terms of withholding European uh, funds so that member states understand that this is not in their interest. Um, and uh, so I, I, I can accept what, what, what Peter said with this, with this proviso, so to say. It's not lack of solidarity, that no. is, cannot solidarity be. Solidarity is a basic principle, here I agree. And, and do you think that um, we talk about existential threat feelings in Europe? I mean, looking at the UK and the debate that's going on now after the referendum, we see a lot of how much misunderstanding there was. But do you think the Brexit decision has it shaken the the, the, the values of the European Union, well, or I, has it reinforced them? I regret very much. I mean the. Uh, uh, Brexit uh, decision. I mean, this month will be one of the saddest moments in the EU history. I mean, the application or activation of the Article 50, it's a bad news. It's a bad news for Europe and it's a bad news for Europeans. And I consider Brits as Europeans. I want, I mean, them to be a part of us. I'm looking forward for best accommodation and best this uh, kind of uh, uh, partnership agreement, association, or whatever agreement we might have uh, with Brits. We need them and they need us. Uh, but um, yeah, I mean, fundamentals are shaken and shaken not just because of Brits. I think we are over flooded with the kind of uh, uh, non confident sense uh, among ourselves. And not just because of us. We are attacked by fake news and uh, disinformation, which, which is a part of war against Western values. I mean, we have to understand this. There are countries which really hate seeing us being together and flourishing. Mm -hmm. and, and this is a, a matter of fact. We have to recognize this. Certainly, <laughs> I receive uh, many um, comments saying that the EU, the end is nigh and, uh, and Frexit is next, Nexit is next. What do you think will happen? It's, it's interesting to see France, uh, po French polling showing how popular the euro is within France, and yet we see Marine Le Pen doing quite well. Well, I think it this has to do with this, um, with the fact that indeed many policies were wrong. The fact that you don't have Europe indeed delivering in jobs and in growth uh, undermines the trust of many people in governments, and there are many other factors. I mean, people see the injustice of all these uh, rich people becoming richer and richer, and those who don't have enough uh, uh, more and more uh, alienated. And that's what explains all these uh, populist movements like uh, Marine Le Pen. But I, I'm pretty confident that she will not win in France. Uh, I, 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 I'm, I also share what, what Peter has said about how sorry I am with Brexit because I myself campaign in Britain against Brexit with my Labour uh, comrades and, uh, and, uh, and I think it's not only Brexit to, there to indeed alar alarm us, it's also Trump. Trump also reflects all to these movements. Extent, uh, in a way, I, I think that uh, the good thing is that he will indeed make Europe face that it has to rely on itself and not anymore, be it in security and defense or any other thing, it should rely on others. And we are under attack, as indeed Peter highlighted. There are forces, Putin definitely has an old industry attacking us, uh, creating fake news and so on. Yep. So are we going to succumb 
to all these guys that are there, uh, you know, uh, captured by interests, including uh, by the Gazprom interests, or are we going to actually stand up for our citizens? I'm ready to go to the Maquis again. I will <laughs> fight for Europe. I will fight for a democratic Europe until the, my last breath. I don't want to leave to my children and grandchildren a situation that is any, anywhere comparable to the ones that my parents lived through the Second World War. So I, I, I greatly I, agree with Anna, and we should understand. I mean, this is not just the failure of the European Union. Now we see a different uh, page of history in a, in, a, in a Western world. I mean, some in the world might, uh, might see us in decline. And if we do not demonstrate unity, enough of understanding and practical actions, I mean, to bridge, to be transatlantic, as my pin mm. is, <laughs> to be really uh, Western democracies based, market economy, human rights and, and social dim uh, d dimension. So then we, we fail one by one. And, and this is not just the, will be the European failure, it will be the world failure because uh, we still remain uh, an oasis of stability and, and a good example, I have to admit. Well, transatlantic <laughs> in what concerns our values, universal values, uh, not those who uh, on the other side of the Atlantic are actually undermining them. <laughs> so, exactly. United against some of very challenging external forces. Anna Patros, thank you very much indeed for joining us. My pleasure.